good reason the word road trip elicits a wide range of emotions within me. At first, I feel this slightly anxious wave of excitement accompanied by tingles exploding up through my belly as I imagine all the amazing potential of what the road trip will look like, feel like, smell, and taste like. Then comes the uneasy, slightly queasy feeling in my gut as I begin to worry about the cost and all the nagging what ifs. What if we get a flat tire? What if it rains when we get there? Is it really going to be that fun? But then I remember how much fun I always have with the awesome friends going with me. And a sense of excitement and wonder hits me. And I ask myself, what new quote or inside joke will come from the trip? Hey Lucas, are we there yet? <laughs> <laughs> what ingenious alternative will we come up with if plans fall through when we get there? And what adventure is going to pop up out of thin air, as it almost always does? My last road trip made me think about some fun guidelines to follow to get the best experience possible on your next adventure on the open road. My hope is that these suggestions will help your trip to be just as amazing and incredible as mine was. Before we get started, the video clips are from my last road trip to a place in New Mexico called Cosmic Campground. The sky is so dark there, thanks to nearly no light pollution, that it offers a stunning visual experience you'd be hard pressed to find anywhere else. And it doesn't end there. We went for the stars, but we saw and experienced so much more than that. You'll see what I'm talking about. Rule number one, go with the right people. Make sure to go with people you absolutely love and can tolerate, and everybody who is going really wants to go. I can tell you from my experience, if you can't tolerate somebody for an extended period of time or they only kind of want to go, they can ruin the momentum and energy of the trip. There's nothing worse than having to walk on eggshells around somebody when you're supposed to be enjoying yourself and relaxing. On the other person who only wants to kind of be there, they don't bring much energy to the table. If everyone contributes to the positive energy of the trip, you end up creating and finding the best spots and memories, things you never would have thought of otherwise. When you have the right people for the trip, you never have to worry. Anything can be fun, even making weird whale noises in the car or singing along to karaoke. In my last trip, I couldn't think of any better people to road trip with. Some of the most open-minded and adventuresome people I know. Rule number two, be open to anything. It's easy to stay caught in your own habits from your normal life, but trips let you do things that you usually wouldn't be able to in your normal life. Like videoing your friend sleeping or looking at a structure and instead of passing the thought of climbing up it, actually climbing up it. Or maybe something you've always thought but never done, like running in a farmed field, watching the ends of the field disappear into the horizon. Doing these things not only feel amazing when you actually get to do it, but it also creates those amazing memories and translates to your life when you get back. Because now, now you have a story you can tell at your next party. Or next time, you can bring another friend to do that same thing later and share your experience with them. Rule number three. Explore. I know this might sound obvious, but it's true. Explore things around you. If you're driving and you see an interesting sign somewhere, follow it and see where you end up. We did this on our trip, and as a result, it made the trip. We tried to find a lake or a stream and went through mountain roads and plenty of bridges to find any running water. Everything was either dry or too small to wash off and swim in. Then, we were driving to a trailhead to hike and we saw a sign for a lake. We figured it was dry like the other one we went to, but we thought we would check anyways. We ended up finding a natural cold spring on a mountain with crystal clear water in the middle of the desert. We happily spent the entire day there and got to be super goofy and make some pretty great memories. Come here! Come on, little guy! Go on, you know you want it. Come on. You got it. You got it. Come on. Come on. Don't be scared. I don't know. Don't be scared. Come on, you got it. No, it's all right. I got you. You're okay. What? It's okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> Rule number four. Be open to changing plans. Plans will always fall through. And let's face it, shit happens. Nothing will ever go perfectly as planned. But having a general idea of what you want to do and finding a path to it makes the adventure worthwhile. What do I mean by this? I've got a perfect example. 
We went to Cosmic Campground to see the stars and were planning on leaving in the morning to see the Grand Canyon, which was five hours away. But the first night, out of all the things to happen in the middle of the desert, it started raining and was cloudy for the entire night. We still had plenty of fun throwing the frisbee and watching the clouds roll in, as well as some spiritual awakening watching the rain and feeling the wind. We decided to stay another night to see the stars. It was only during the supply run necessary to make that happen that we found the natural lake with the cold springs on the mountain. I feel that the trip would have been a lot less memorable if we had stuck with the original plan of going to the Grand Canyon, especially given the time crunch it would have been to get back before we all had work. As Paul Veselief once said, set your goals in the concrete and your plans in the sand. And last but not least, rule number five. Don't hesitate. Can't tell you how many times obstacles have come up during the planning of a trip, whether it's finances or a friend's wedding or work wants me to come in even though I signed those days off four weeks in advance. I could go on and on. My point is you can pick a million of excuses not to go. My advice, don't get caught up in the excuse trap. I've never been upset or regretted going on any of the trips where an obstacle came up and I decided to go anyway. If anything, it's the opposite. I couldn't find the exact quote, but my personal mantra is, I'd rather do something and fail than live with the regret of not knowing what could have been. Don't live with the regret and wonder how amazing something could have been. There's a poem by William F. O'Brien that embodies this mantra a lot more eloquently than I ever could do. So to end this video, I'd like to share it with you today. It's called Better to Try and Fail Than to Have Never to Try at All. Some say risk nothing, try only for the sure thing. Others say nothing gambled, nothing gained. Go all out for your dream. Life can be lived either way, but for me, I'd rather try and fail than never try at all, you see. Some say don't ever fall in love. Play the game of life wide open. Burn your candles at both ends. But I say no, it's better to have loved and have lost than never to have loved at all, my friend. When many moons have gone by, and you are alone with your dreams of yesteryear. All of your memories will bring you cheer. You'll be satisfied, succeed or fail, win or lose, knowing that the right path you did choose. And with that, thank you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, like the video, and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. I've also got some that you can watch. Thank you so much.